life It starts with feeling lonely Then the thoughts of suicide Sitting alone in this empty room I cry Waiting for an angel to visit in the night I pray and I pray But the demons don't subside I wake up in the morning See my life through my new eyes The vision is clear I'm making all things right Tighten the screws Cause last night I almost died Man, this is another man. It's Monday. Oh my God. Oh, the week is just not long enough. No, it's it not. not. <laughs> I did not want to get out to bed this morning, but I said, you know what? I got a special guest today. So I got to get out. The, I got my ass up to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, ladies and gentlemen, please get up out the bed, go wash your face, brush your teeth, make some coffee, get your day started. Yes. Don't forget to Amen. wash your ass. What's that? That's right. Don't forget to wash your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wash your ass, too. Please do. Please. <laughs> Nobody like a sticky ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much news today, but we got a special guest today, so we're not going to give you too much news. Ladies and gentlemen, where is Jamie Foxx? Where is Jamie Foxx? You think that they he's all kind of things? They said Jamie Foxx at home playing pickleball. Jamie Foxx is paralyzed. Jamie Foxx is blind. Jamie Foxx is deaf. <sighs> Where Man, is he, Jamie? He's taking that part of Ray Charles a little too far. <laughs> he's taking a lot of parts too far. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Foxx is missing. How does a popular black man, famous black man, go missing? Crazy. I, I, I've i never seen a, a famous black man just go missing. <laughs> <laughs> never. Well, you think if he was fine that he'd be out talking to folks and saying, hey, I'm okay, you know, nothing's wrong. But right. I mean, it's like he's just fell off the face of the earth. He's yeah. missing. Jamie Foxx is missing. Mr. Ray Charles, Mr. <laughs> Living Color, he is gone. Yeah. Will somebody know where he at? Please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> America's most wanted. TMZ don't even know where he is at. TMZ knows every damn thing. TMZ can even find him. <laughs> that shit, this shit is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. It is crazy. It's crazy. Brother, you got any news, man? Oh, you know, Tom Cruise Tom Cruise called me about 30 minutes ago. Still no update. He said Mission Impossible, so I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 uh, Coyote, you got any um racist news today? <laughs> We're all racist. <laughs> We're all racist. <laughs> Woke up racist again. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That damn white supremacy, God damn it! I, I know, man. And and you're you're the black white supremacist. <laughs> oh, you did this right one night. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, oh my man. god! I, 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 I saw so many videos this weekend on YouTube of these women saying, you know, if you're white, you're racist, and all this uh, stuff. I'm just so sick and tired of hearing it. Man. If you didn't like the Little Mermaid, then you're racist, uh, you know, that kind of thing. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it got to stop. This, this, this racist thing got to stop. Be honest, I'm going to tell you, honestly, we all got a little bit of racist in us. Oh, every last one of us got a little bit. You oh. do what you, anybody do one thing. I'm going to call you out your name. I'm going to say you crack up. I'm going to say you wet back. I'm, I'm going to call you out your damn name. Yes. <laughs> We all are. Somebody cut you off in traffic or somebody pissed you off of the other race, you're going to say some racist out your mouth. <laughs> That's a fair point. That's well, I took the train, so I'm going to worry about, about that. I got to say some <laughs> racist to you to piss you off. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I got a special guest. We got a special guest on the show today. Special guest on the show, Mr. 
Percy, the Prince of Fresh Air Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the brother. Give it up. Ladies and gentlemen, he's an actor, entertainer, and also a damn comedian. He didn't put comedian on there. You didn't put comedian. I, you you're, know, I, dude, I saw some of your clips. You're a funny dude. I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I try to be humble. You know, I, I think, you know, actor, podcast, entertainer, I think that's good enough. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> put down the people. You know? <laughs> Yeah. He oh, came man. on. My so, so brother, look, I gotta ask you. Hey, what's that, brother? I said uh, he came on my hey, podcast. I'm gonna. Can you hear me? Can you yeah, hear, hear me, you, brother? I hear you. I hear you. Right. Yeah, I said he came on my podcast, and I went on his podcast, and we had a great conversation. Yes, we did. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Question, brother. Question: How'd you come up with the Prince of Fresh Air? How'd you come up with that? <laughs> Man, let me. I, yo, you know what's funny? My so I, I think I might have mentioned to Kyle, but when I first started my podcast, it was called the most. It was supposed to be called a uh, controversial time name. And after a couple months, and I started seeing it started growing. I said, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, it's like acting. It's like, how do you stand out from the crowd, right? And controversial right. topics isn't something that's very, you know, it's standout-ish. It kind of just floats in the background. Right. So I think right. with the help of AI, I was, I don't even, I think I came, I was watching The Prince of, uh, see, I mix the uh, Fresh Prince of Bella and my podcast together all the time, but I was watching an episode <laughs> right. <of> that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> And uh, I said, you know what? I like the name. How can I put a spin on it? So my podcast for me, even though it's kind of borrowing some of the aspects of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Right. I knew what I was going to be doing was fresh air. It was a breath of fresh air because I was doing something a lot of other people weren't doing. I was tackling subjects that a lot of people wasn't doing. Now, the cool thing with it. Because I have a space together, there's no spaces in between, so it's all one the Prince of Fresh Air, right? You right, you even say the Prince of Fresh Hair, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, that yeah, I came up. So, I started in 2020, uh, uh, 2020, and then by the end of the year, I switched it to the Prince of Fresh Air, and ever since then, it's been a taking the name of his own. So, I, you know, thank the heavens to AI. <laughs> right, right, brother. So, 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 what made you get to uh, acting and stuff, man? What, what, what uh, inspired you to get into acting, man? Uh, so, what inspired? So, when I was younger, uh, before I went to high school, I, I grew up watching Sweet Life of Zack and Coney, Head of My Ten, all the Disney classics. Okay. Um. So, in t- uh, 2009, uh, when I was starting to look at uh, high schools, one of my teachers, I think it was my science teacher, actually. Um. Okay. You know, I had did like a little small, you know, middle school production at the time. Right. And I didn't know what type of high school I wanted to go to. And in New York, what they do is they give you a fat book, uh, mm. of basically all the high school directories. So they break it down to each borough. So it's Manhattan, the Queens, the Brooklyn, Staten Island, whatever. Oh, no, Staten Island is not included because we don't <laughs> claim Staten Island. So I take that back. But the other boroughs. Um, and I knew I wanted to stay in Manhattan because at the time I was living in Manhattan, but I also knew I was moving to the Bronx. So I, I always lived in Manhattan. And they recommended the school, Urban Assembly School for Performing Arts. And I was like, you know what? I, I like performing. I always liked those shows. I always thought it was going to be easy. I always thought it was going to be something I can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just enamored with it. I, th- I thought, you know, me doing something like that would be entertaining, would be fun. I could, you know, make people laugh. And so I ended up going to that school. I applied, auditioned, and I got in. Um, so ever since then, 2010 to, to now, 13 years later, I've still been doing it. It's been a hell of a journey. Uh, right. A lot of a lot of self-growth, too. That's why I liked it. It was a lot of self-growth because mm-hmm. uh, I struggled with my own, you know, identity issues back right. then. So, it, you know, it helped <laughs> me grow as a person on stage and off stage. Uh, so it's a journey that I like to tell people because it's hard. A lot of people assume it's going to be easy, and it's not. Uh, a right. lot of training. It, it's, a, it's a lot to go into it, but I love it. I love performing. So, Awesome, awesome. So who's some of your favorite entertainers, man? Oh, favorite. You know, I was thinking, <laughs> you know, 
Ah, na, na, <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Kyle. Uh, although you know, you know what's funny? So Kyle, you remind me of um I had met John Voigt like this was like when I was in college, so about five, six years ago. You wow. remind me of uh, John Voigt a little bit, and then you when you was doing the intro, I thought Chris Tucker immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tucker. <laughs> That's good, man. Everybody said I'm Eddie Murphy. <laughs> now that's just racist. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I say Chris Tucker. You, you had the personality, like when when you did the intro, I automatically thought Rush Hour, the first oh, one, because he he's always been. Now he's not as much, but he always like very uh, right. boisterous, personal. You you have that, so I Appreciate immediately it, throw Chris Tucker. Most most friends. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, come on, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, when I went overseas, I was I'm ex military, right? So when I went overseas, there was like Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy. Wow. Was like, uh, <laughs> maybe I can maybe I can use this. Maybe I can be safe with Eddie Murphy. So I I said, guess what? Yes, I am Eddie Murphy. So I signed autographs and I ran in Afghanistan. And I was signed all kind of. I was like, I'm Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Hey, whatever pays the bills, right? It, look, it paid off. I was safe. I came back home safe. <laughs> See, that's no different than when uh, in Russia when they went to China and, and the, the lady called uh, Chris Tucker Kobe Bryant. I mean, oh, right. you know. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, Racist. man. Who's who your favorite uh, entertainers, man? Give me a give me a couple. You know me. I you know I so over the years. When I was in, when I started getting to acting, Denzel's uh-huh. always been my number one. I love Denzel. I would Denzel. love to work with him at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, he's definitely someone I kind of, uh, when I look up in the acting world, he's like my number one. Um, I also, I, I like a lot of people. Uh, so he'd be number one. Will Smith got, thought, I mean, he might slap me, but I like him. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't clue, he's going to slap me. So. <laughs> right, right. Um, him. Who else? Uh, you know, this, uh, so many people, uh, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Chadwick Boseman, I was a big fan of, uh, mm-hmm. rest in peace to him. And uh, it's it, it, so many people in the industry I look up to, Chris Hemsworth, you know, people doing all types of projects. But in terms of who I would love to work with and stuff like that, Denzel, Will Smith, Chadwick, if he was still around, Michael B. Jordan, mm-hmm. um, you know, those, I, I love my, you know, I support and I always appreciate the other fellow black artists. Got you, got you. How about female, man? You oh, you named a bunch of men. <laughs> you don't like hey, no females? <laughs> hey, it's 2023, man. Come on. Nah, <laughs> it's all right. Hey, look, look, look. I, I, look, I, I made sure you put us a females. Like, I don't don't come at me like, oh, he don't like women. <laughs> <laughs> come on, look at me. Come on. I, I'm from New York, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, give me some females, man. So, so we, you know, other, other, you know, they won't get mad at you. Try to cancel. Oh man, I, so female acting, female acting. Uh, I mean, Angela Bassett can't forget her. Um, I, I'm blanking on her. I'm blanking on her name. Um, uh, Black Queen. Uh, everybody knows uh, uh Viola Davis. Um, Scarlett Johansson. I'm a big fan of. Uh, uh there was the girl from. Uh, I don't know if y'all watched the show, uh, The Arrow. Um, there was a Felicity Smoke, the, the girl that played her. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. like her. I can't remember her name, but yeah, yeah, it'll about. come to me at some point. Um, right. Uh, let me see who else is Lupita is uh someone I would like to work with too. Um, right. and and don't get me wrong, there's other people and other races I would love to work with too. But course, I think in the terms of black space and black, you know, what they're doing is stuff that is you know current to the times. Um, it's still impactful. I mean, Black Panther, come on. I mean, nobody's right, going to argue with right. that. Um, it, I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of people I respect and admire, but in terms of, you know, when I um, immediately think who I want to work with, I mm. put those first easily, without a doubt. Okay, okay. So, yeah, brother, I see I see you got a uh, a long line of movies you've been in, man. I see you've, you've been very busy. Yes. It, you know what, man? It's, I, so, for me, I actually started talking about my journey a little bit. And I was talking to my manager about this because we were sitting down. Uh, I just signed with them uh, about a month ago. And uh, 
one of my re- <clears throat> excuse me one of my regrets is i wish i would have understood the business uh mm-hmm. more because i think i mean grant i'm still a young person but i think that if i would have understood the business a little earlier mm. things would have been a little different than it is now but i'm still grateful for everything i think everything <clears throat> everybody has a different journey um and it, it's one of those things that you know i love to stay busy um yeah. And, you know, I'm at a different point in my career now where I'm not going to be doing, you know, I love acting. I didn't get into it to be famous, although I'm good looking, charismatic, gray hair, everybody notices, blah, yeah. blah, blah, right, right. Oh, but, give me a minute, give me a minute, man. So are you single? I, I, I'm I, not, not right now. I'm not. Oh, okay, I, all right. Because I I'm not. Let everybody know you 6'4". Ladies and gentlemen, 6'4". You know women love tall men, tall That's men, true. big feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked at your portfolio. I'm like, oh shit, he tall as shit. Six, I'm like, women love a tall man. That's true. <laughs> I, you know, I, I I've had my fair share with the ladies. You know, I. Uh, and you know pretty, what's funny? I'm sure you have, brother. I'm sure you have. Yeah, I, you know, this is my first long term relationship, more than five months, and okay. I'm not saying that because I'm a woman's man. I'm a womanizer. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but right. and, and this line of work, it's. For me, I, you know, I was having this conversation uh, when I was working out the day at the park. Um, this guy always asked me about the industry and stuff. And it's a very <clears throat> self selfish uh, industry in the sense mm. that it takes up a lot of your time. Right. So for me, you know, it's my number one priority. So I know sometimes, you know, when you get in a relationship, you have to compromise. You have to do this oh, and that. Right. That's something that I'm not willing to compromise on. I'm just not. And, but I make it clear that th- this is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And if you want something a little more structured, a little more, uh, you know, you know, I'm going to be working nine to five. I come exactly. home and we can plan. I did that. Then I want to be someone that you want to be with. But, you know, for me, I think doing that for so being single for so long, because I was single from college to now. Um, wow. And I, I enjoyed it. I like being single just because I could stick and move. I, you know, if exactly. You know what I'm saying? I was, uh, you know, born and raised in New York. So when I moved to LA, like I said, I had no attachments anywhere. Don't get me wrong, family, friends, yeah. Right. But it was easier to just move. And, you know, now I have someone who understands what type of line of work I'm in. Uh, They understand that, you know, I'm going to be auditioning. You know, it's hard for me to plan certain things. You know, many people want to plan, hey, I want to plan to go to Disney World August, in the middle of August. And I'm thinking, I already know that's going to be a busy time in the industry. So that's right. not something I really want to do. So it, it, it it's one of those things where it's like uh, it's great to have someone in my life who understands that, and good, it's that's a good. balance, you know. It, it's a that's balance good. for sure. That's good. That is good because women do not understand entertainers. They do not. No. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. They hate us, man. They hate us. I'm a stand-up comedian myself, man. I could tell. I could tell. So yeah, my, my <laughs> wife hates it. She's like, oh God, no, when are you gonna stop doing comedy? I'm like, never. <laughs> <laughs> you saw you, know, you know I was a class clown when you met me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I've never stopped the comedy, man. Never. <laughs> As you shouldn't, man. You know, and that's why, you know, and that's the crazy part. Because what I do now, what I try to do on my podcast, even though my audience is mostly, I try to stay with the young demographic. I have been starting to have, you know, people of, you know, who's have a little more life experience than me come on. And that's one of the things I talk about, too, is some older people will come on, especially when you start having a family, get married, want to settle down. That's a big, you know, contention with a lot of people. It's like, you know, I think over time when you get with someone and, you know, whether it's com- uh, comedy or, or just anything in the entertainment industry, right. it's a kind of like one of those things where eventually I start feeling like, and it's not for everybody, but I think some people start pushing the, Hey, uh, you know, when you're going to get that nine to five, that corporate job, you know, right. when is that going to, and you know, it's, and I understand it. It's just, you know, I get it. Everybody's not, they don't understand it. unless you're in this industry, you don't know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's funny. I had a one of my college buddies. He was in a corporate world for a couple of years, mm. and he just switched over to acting uh, two years ago. Wow! And he was like, "Man, this is a lot harder than I thought." You know, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not just going work and come back home. Nah, it's like you no, know, it's, you it's work. A grind. <clears throat> yeah, it's a grind, especially right. when you have managers and agents like I do. It's, it's, it's a constant. You know, I I could be coming home and I get a, a call. Hey, you got to audition, dude. You know, nine in the morning. 
So, you know, it, it's something like that where, you know, going out drinking every night is not something I want to do just because if I get that that call, right. you know, a, a TV show, casting director want to hear, I was drinking on a Tuesday night, you know what I'm saying? So, it, right. it's a, you know, it, it's a it's a hard, I, and I'm sure you know, it's a hard, in, in a fulfilling way, but it's a hard industry to maneuver and yeah, everything just is a, a drop of a dime, you know what I'm saying? Right, most definitely, brother. So, yeah, man. So, have you done any play work? I see you did a lot of movies and plays. Oh, man, I, I was a theater, I, I did theater for about 10 years of my life. When uh, so I've been acting for 13 years, most of that time was theater. So, okay, uh, right. yeah, so I went to high school for theater, I went to college for theater, and I got nominated to compete in a couple of um, um regional uh competitions um and, and stuff like that i've done a lot of shakespeare i think i did about seven shakespeare plays oh, um good. yeah I, I have a ton of theater experience and you know what it, it's it's one of those things i'm still li- like you could probably tell because of how loud i am and how animated i am i still have some of that theater in me right but theater and tv work is way different so it took me a long time to really understand the difference in the mediums. So mm. it's, you know, I could easily jump and do a, a stand-up comedy show, but to switch to doing a, a TV show, a movie, it's way different. It's a completely different skill. So now, you know, I used to be very more animated. Now I'm a little more, you know, I, I would say I, I understand how the camera works now, so I had to tone mm. it down a lot more. So, uh, but theater, I think every actor needs to learn theater, do theater. Uh, at least do it once because it's a lot harder in, in some in aspects. Um, and it's like comedy. You go on the you know stage, you bomb. There's no coming back. You don't get a second no. take. You don't get a redo. It's, it's, you know, there no no one, there no one takes. Like, oh, take, take one, take two. <laughs> no, you screwed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you oh, are screwed, man. man. So it's it's uh, it, I have a lot of stories from my theater, the theater world that that I. I I still to this day remember like it happened yesterday just because it's it's it was fun. I'm not I'm never ever going to rule out doing it again, but I think for the sake of where I'm trying to go in my career, I probably won't do it for a while just to right cuz now I'm really starting to feel really comfortable in front of the camera which mm. where like, you know, 3 years ago I was still like what the hell, you know, I'm doing theater in front of the camera and it doesn't work. So, it, it's I, I love theater always will hold it to my heart, but that's TV and film is where the money is, unfortunately. <laughs> right, right, right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share some of this work for y'all in case y'all want to see, see him in action. I'm going to share some of his work. The brother is talented. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> the brother got skills. I was like, this brother's actually funny. He should be a comedian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually got more stuff coming. So, I, you know, I have more footage. Um, I just haven't posted just because one of the films that had the footage from one of the... Um, I didn't make it to the screening because I was in LA when it happened. But the r- director was telling me when they did the private screen, everybody was like, "Who is that guy? I want to meet him because they felt like I was like the the guy of the film that everybody loved. You know, I was right, funny, right. I was hilarious, I stood out, and that's what I that's the type of work I like to do. Is you know, I'm trying to go like the Dwayne Rock Johnson route. You know, he's the most electrifying man. I'm the most charismatic man, so I think it's just natural, you know, to go that way. Got you, got you, got you. So. Explain your hair, man. I, your, your hair, man, it stands out. Yes, it does. Yo, <laughs> yo, you know, it, 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 you know my, everybody, it seems like everybody but my mother loves it. My mother hates it. because <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I, my mother, she, you know, she's old school. She likes to, I've always had short hair, right. always. So when I started, when I left the house for college, I haven't, you know, Every, even when I come back, she like, uh, when you cutting your hair, when you cutting it, and it's like I'm not gonna cut it just because. I get why some people may not like it. I mean, it's, it's, some people just have their own thing. But hey, man, it's, it's part of your look, brother. You gotta you know have, what I'm saying? have a look. Uh, most of, and that's the key part, you know. For me, when I go into these auditions room, when I'm walking down the street and stuff, for me, I'm trying to stand out not because I'm trying to be a douchebag, but right. I feel like people tend to remember people that have certain things that they can yes. remember. You know, yeah. so when I, you know, every time I have a, a in-person or a virtual audition with a casting director, somebody, the first thing they say is, I saw your hair and I love it. So, <laughs> uh, hey, you know, I, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's all about, you know, I remember having this conversation with my agent when I first signed with them. And it's like this, you know, 
I go in the cast room, like let's say they cast on a bunch of African Americans, right? I show up in a room. Generally, everybody's probably gonna come looking the same, probably the same type of shirt, same type of you know, jeans right. for the character. I walk in, they am like, Oh, I remember this guy, you know what I'm saying? Right. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But for good or bad, some people might like it, some people may be like, oh, it's awful, you know, cut that thing. But it, right. it, it's really about standing out. You had to in this industry. Yeah. It's so many people. You know, trying to navigate it. You know, I'm not trying to do, you know, plastic surgery, nothing like that. <laughs> this simple is easy. Take it out. <laughs> yeah, man. So I was saying, man, you're a very athletic guy, man. You like a, you, you, you martial arts, basketball. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love, and you know what's funny? I was just having this conversation with my younger brother that I remember in high school. Um, cause my brother's always been, I come up from a big family, 13 siblings. So I was always the one that stayed inside, read books, uh, played chess. That was my thing. So when I, once I got to college, I actually started going to the weight room and stuff like that. And I, bl- yeah. I blew up. I went from like one, I was like six foot, 185 pounds. I think by the end of freshman year, I was damn near almost 300 pounds. So, yeah. um, I started weightlifting. I started getting to that and, you know, now my my idea of fitness is always challenging myself something new. So, you know, I'm a big John Jones fan. I love USC. I love MMA. And my agent out in L.A., he actually does jujitsu and he rolls around with a couple of USC uh, guys. So hmm. I started learning uh, kickboxing and, and, and um, Muay Thai because of John Jones. I love him. Uh, great fighter. And that's someone I wouldn't even want to fight even – if I was feeling good, so you know, what I'm <laughs> I feel you, man. You know, what I'm saying, but you, you know what? Everybody's, you know, for me, it's I love martial arts. So I look at for me, I'm six four. I'm a big guy. Um, I'm not the biggest guy walking around, but I'm a big guy. So for me, I know the type of stuff. Everything for me is kind of centered around acting in a sense, just because I know my skills, my 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 build, my type. Is going to be sending around acting in some way, shape, or form. So for me, I look at my trajectory of acting in the sense that I'm probably going to be going the route of like a Dwayne or but you know Batista, where you know it's going to be a lot of action films, those type of things. So for me, it's always good to learn skills, especially in this industry. You know, to understand you know how to throw a punch for boxing scene. You know, when you watch Creed, a lot of those actors they may not be world class, but right. you know they probably picked up boxing one way or another. So. It made it easier for him to train and get ready for Creed Three. You know, Jonathan Majors and, and Michael B. Jordan. Uh, so, I think depending on your body type and what your skill set is, I'm very athletic now, and I love be, you know I love being active. So for me, gotcha, gotcha. action films is kind of something I would love to do. So right. it's just naturally good to learn something new all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whether it's a martial well, you know, art, you got the height and the, the bill for it, man. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got you got the bill for it, brother. Yeah. So look, man, look, man, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of people watching that uh want to know how do you get in the industry, man? What are the what are the steps? What's the first step to get in the industry? What, uh, the industry. I know it's a long process, but <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's man. Let me tell you, it's and you know, you might have experience with that, and the comedy tends to be a lot different than mm. um you know acting. So I always tell people, you know, if you're gonna go into acting. Mm. Just realize it's going to be a lot more no's than yeses. Um, mm. And you really need to understand the business of acting. Because so many people tell you, you have to stand out. You have to look a certain way. Right. Uh, you have to you have to work. Mm. But it's really a business. It's called the entertainment business for a reason. So, right. yeah, you, you can be a great actor. But if, you, if nobody ever sees you, then it really, you know. You and I, I'm not trying to describe them, but nobody sees you. So, for me, the first thing I will say is get training and experience. That's the first mm. thing. You know, no agent, no manager, no casting director for one of your favorite TV shows is going to look at you, let alone sniff at you, mm. if you have nothing to show for it. So, mm. and you know, whether it's student films, feature films, your local, you know, theater play, um, you know, a, a little uh, non-profit um, play or uh, thing you're doing, that's experience. So the more experience right. you have, the better. Um, so that's the first thing training, whether it's community college, whether it's college, uh, whether you just taking private acting courses or just courses in general, mm-hmm. get those under your belt. Those are going to be the two most essential things. Um, and then once you start doing that, 
you want to get a headshot. Uh, headshots right. and your resume. These are all your calling cards. Uh, so headshot, resume, and real. And the reason why I say work is important is you want to gather, you know, footage like you mentioned, you know, clips of your work. Because when you go into these offices, especially for the people, let's say you're a big show, the Big Bang Theory, right? When they look at you, they want to see what your acting style is. They want to see how you look in the camera, how you how you act. Mm-hmm. Um, so without those tools, your headshot, your resume, it's like you know going to a job interview with no resume. You know they don't know what you what you're doing. So <laughs> right, um, get those materials down. Headshot, resume, real, um, and then once those things are in order, then you can start looking at agents and managers. Um, and that process alone, depending on who you are, you know, for someone like me, it was a little more easier just because I do have a couple friends in the industry and I have a, a look that a lot of people don't have. So it was e- a little easier for me to, you know, kind of finesse my way into that. Um, right. But just to get in those rooms, just to even get an audition, just for them to even respond to you, have, make sure all those stuff is in order. Um, and then once you do that, like I said, realize this is a business. So, and it's a business about, they do care about your well-being. Uh, agents and managers are a little different. I'll probably get into that in a little bit. Uh, but it's all about making money. Uh, right, so when they course. look at you, don't take it personally. If they tell you, no, uh, we'll pass up, you know, reapply in a couple of years when you get more experience on your belt. Right. Just because, you know, I've auditioned for projects that John Cena has done, that Gal Gadot has done, that, you know, other celebrities have done. So mm. they're going to be competing with the, the, the crowd, you know, the cream of the crowd. You're not going right, to be competing right. with people walking right. off the street. So, you know, it's, this is a process. It sounds easy, you know, as I'm saying it, but it really takes, it took, you know, I've been in 13 years. Um, it's been five years now since I've done TV and film work. And trust me, it gets harder as you start getting up. So mm-hmm. when you're, when you're, you know, starting off, do as much work as you can, whether it's free or not paid, uh, free or paid. But I would say when you're starting off free work, just do it, get that experience. Um, don't worry about the money until you know you actually have re- representation because then you'll start to go out for stuff that actually pays you something right. that you can pull off work from more. And if you don't even have to worry about rent, that's even better. But um, it, it, it's one of those things where you're going to have to start fine tuning your life around it. So you're not going to be work- able to work a corporate job now yeah. because most auditions tend to be uh, in the morning, afternoon. Um, so you're going to have to start tailoring everything around that where. You know, someone calls me, hey, we're filming, you know, two uh, two days from now. Uh, you have an audition due in the morning or you have to come in at three o'clock for this audition. Um, it, it's a grueling process mm. um, and it's something that you will have to start integrating your life around. Um, but once you get an agent and manager, the work, it doesn't stop. It gets a little easier because now you have people <laughs> who put you in those rooms. Um, right. But again, you know, right now the industry has changed. So luckily for, you know, the industry now, everything is virtual for the most part. Mm-hmm. So now it's easier to just do, be at home and self-tape. So, you know, get, you know, cameras, uh, get a microphone, uh, get a, a great camera, whether it's a new phone or you want to buy those DSR cameras that cost you thousands of dollars. But you want to, you know, get equipment. So when you're recording at home, you look presentable. You look like you, you can compete with other people. Um, and you know, it's always going to constantly change. Uh, but those, I would say, once you get an agent, a manager, then everything becomes a little more easier. Things become a little more easy to navigate. Um, mm-hmm. so that's the ultimate goal. Every actor wants agents and managers. Not everybody is able to get them just because, you know, your market. Let me touch on that real quick too. Um, uh, I want to make this too drawn out, but depending on where you live, it may be hard or easier. So mm-hmm. I've always lived in New York or LA. So those are the two major cities you want to be in if you want to be. Uh, right. New York is more musical. So if you want to do musical theater, that type of thing, New York. But if you want to be in TV and film, Atlanta, Chicago, New York, and L.A. Um, and <clears throat> like I said, when you, it's going to be harder if you live in like the, the, the North Carolinas. The, oh, Virginia. You know, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> hey, I said it. Huh? <laughs> but you, you know what? If you know, like I said, the industry changes, so it's e. If you're willing to, you know, fly out and do certain things right. to do that for those opportunities, then go go and do it. You know, mm-hmm. and 
it's it, it's very easy to I, I here's the number one thing if anybody don't listen to anything I'm just saying if you're gonna get into acting don't do it because you want to be famous don't do it mm-hmm. because you know I lived in LA for three years and I wouldn't say I regretted it because I did learn a lot about myself but I don't like LA mostly just because of this is my my personal opinion a lot of people out there are mostly out there just to get famous or use other people. right and <clears throat> If that's your environment, you want to become an influencer and stuff like that, you know, by all means, LA is the place to be. Uh, but is in terms of acting, LA, if you're gonna go out there, you need everything in order. You're not gonna just roll up there like a newbie, no experience and nothing. You know, that's what all the major TV shows are casting, like the Lee Rose and all these TV shows. So if you want to get for that, you have to have representation. You have to have solid, you know, casting profiles, which mm-hmm. once you get a manager stuff, they'll help you set up and get you integrated in. Um, and you don't have to pay for it, which, you know, saves you a little bit of money. But out there, it's really the, the, the people who are working actors, the people who are working content creators, the people who are making money or you know, have the potential to really start competing with those people. That's what L.A. is. And uh, it's easier to get wrapped in that type of environment when you're out there. Which is why a lot of people don't work for five years, but they tell people I'm an actor. I'm trying to be famous, <clears throat> but you know they have no representation. They haven't done a job in you know five six years. Right. Um, so just constantly work. For me, it's always working. Whether it's a, I just did a student film not too long ago. I'm probably not going to do it no more, but I just do it just to remember what it's like to be in front of the camera, not to lose that. You know, this is an right. industry of repre- uh, uh, repetition. It's like comedy. You know, if you don't do that skill, if you don't train your memorization, if you don't constantly work in, you know, your, your camera presence, mm. you tend to lose it and you tend to right, forget it. Right. So, you know, and when we talk about these major productions, you know, you get that call, you know, a lot of times you get called, you know, two days before, hey, you're going to be shooting a scene with uh, Tyreek on power. You know, right. you got to, you, they're not expecting, they don't want you walking up in there not knowing your lines, you know, how to hit your mark and stuff like that. You need to be prepared at all times. <clears throat> right. And for me, it's working. Uh, yeah. Some people's training, some people, you know, is, you know, just doing mock auditions, whatever. But for me, it's just constantly working. Um, yeah. And that's the key part. Constantly yeah. work um, and create your own content, too. That's why I started mm-hmm. my podcast. You're going to work. You're going to work less the higher you get just because the opportunities are more competitive mm-hmm. and it becomes a little less available. So create your own content, whether it's Instagram, whether it's a podcast, mm-hmm. whether, you know, it's YouTube or whatever. Create your own stuff to keep you busy, to raise your profile. I think the most important part in today's society is social media. So mm-hmm. get your social media up. Post on there. Cast it. Everybody's looking on it. Casting directors, director. Everybody's looking on it's social on, media. Yeah, social media, yep. You're right. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, that's another key part a lot of actors forget. And other people in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. They don't post their comedy <clears> stuff. <throat> they don't post their acting stuff, their dance stuff right. on social media. So mm. when people look at your profile, they look at it like, all right, how can this person promote our project? How can he promote this film that we're we're doing? Uh, he only posts once a year, you know. Uh, you right. know I'm not saying they won't take any opportunities away from you, but we're starting to see people. Hey, you need ten thousand plus followers to, mm. you know, right. for this thing, and you know, it's it's so much stuff in this industry to to touch on. But the key parts, if I just sum it up. Uh, social media, work on social media, headshot, resume, all your materials, and just start working your way to get an agent, manager, especially manager, depending on where level you are at, uh, what level you at. If you're working, you have credits. Um, those are the people that is going to get you in those rooms that you need to be. And you know, you'll you'll learn the industry a little more once you get to that to that uh, level. Right now, look, bro. I'm gonna ask you a question, man. Now, before I started doing comedy, all that, man, I was a model scout. I worked for Model One. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah, we're for Model One, man. And um, a lot of times these agencies, model agencies, don't like people with a whole bunch of tattoos and and piercings and all that stuff. Is that the same? Is is it, and um acting when, it, when you when, or or is it the same? I don't know because I... <laughs> uh, it's. It's modeling is going to be a little different just because you're you're selling a brand. So right, I think right now with this industry, it is changing. I think there's going to be there's more diversity happening. Okay, but I would say 
you will get typecast more acting. So I've seen actors that I've known who have more of a gothic appearance. They got, you know, mm. pencil on their nose, eyebrows, ears, lips, and stuff like that. And they work. They just might do cliche things for their type. So usually right. you'll see people with, you know, piercings or heavily tatted playing certain type of characters. Um, what it might be if you know someone with a lot of piercing in your face, you're probably gonna be playing some type of vampire, uh, <laughs> right? Someone, you know, <laughs> you know, right, right. Someone working at the club, or, you know, that type of scene. If you're right. someone heavily tatted, I'm not saying you know, right now we're living in an industry where they have makeup and stuff to kind of help you, right? But generally, if you're heavily tatted, you're probably gonna be going more of the route of a bouncer. Uh, you know, a villain, a, a criminal, that type of thing. It's it, acting is typecasting. I have tattoos, but I may I put them in areas where I could easily cover them cover up. They're not there too noticeable. You, there you go. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, this stuff. Some people in this industry who just prefer not to get tattooed, just because there are times where I've done a couple, you know, major projects, and you know, they have to put, uh, they have to cover up the tattoos mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is. Depending on the budget of the stuff you're doing, it may not be feasible for them. But right. generally, if they like you, they, you know they'll work with you. If you get casted, they'll work with you. But if you're heavily tatted to the point where you're like Dave Bautista, well, he's already famous, so it's a little easy for him to kind of work around it. But everybody else, you will probably get typecasted in the sense that you might only go out for certain specific roles, which... I mean, there's some actors who only work because they do that type of work, and there's nothing wrong with that. Depending on what type of actor you want to be, you could be a working actor like that. You know, you do every TV show on the book playing the tattoo heavily biker guy, you know, and you make thousands of dollars doing that. So um, it just depends on what type of avenue you want to go go into as a director. If you want to be an a actor, if you want to be a movie star, you probably don't want to be too heavily, uh, you know, piercing in your face, heavily tatted. Um, but if you want to do character work, you know, vampires, you know, horror stuff, then, you know, you can stay, you know, you can do that too. Right. Got you. Let me ask you another question, brother. Um, when, when it came time to pick an agency to work with, uh, how many times did you have to go through the process? Cause I know uh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> it ain't easy picking the right one. <laughs> no, no, it's not. You know, I, <laughs> Hey, tell us about that, brother. I know you got some stories. Oh, let me tell you. I so I got lucky. I think this was my first. No, it was my second agent. Uh, agent uh, that I interviewed with that I got. So with what with agents, it's gonna be you know depending on the market and your type. Um, they have so every agent has a roster. So mm-hmm. when they when you submit to them or they look at you. They're looking at, okay, I have this my roster right here. How does he fit in all this, right? Because for a lot of agents and stuff, it's a business, like I said, they don't want to have too many black people with short hair who look kind of the same because right. the, the work is not going to be enough to go around for everybody. So they strategically pick people who they feel like, okay, we can go in this direction with, or we can, we can use these people to go in this direction with. Um, so I got lucky in the sense that, I did apply to about, uh, I'm not going to lie, I think I applied to about 25 agents uh, wow. in like you know, a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Now, this is back, this was in 2019. So I was, I had a lot of theater credits at the time and I had a couple, you know, films under my belt, but I didn't really have too much experience at that time. Right. Uh, but I, I did have my IMDb and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. my second agency, I actually sat with, down with him. And he was the head of it. And the reason how I signed with them, and this is the key part, when you're when you're looking for representation, it is a business, but they're looking for people who's going to be re- reliable, they can talk to, and they can have a professional working relationship with. Right. Before we get any further, man, explain what IMDb uh, means, man, to the people, man. Oh, so IMDb is the International Movie Database. So yeah. basically, any movie... So basically, any high-profile movie, TV show you've watched, heard of, seen, your, your brother's cousin, sister's husband taught, told you about is going to be on there. So it's usually it's a web it's a um, website that has all the movies you ever seen, um, and it have certain features that you can see people's agents and, and all that stuff, box office. But it's essentially a place where you can look up anybody's catalog, um, and essentially with that. It's a great tool for an actor just because when you start getting those credits on there, 
and makes you look a little more legit. Not saying that if you don't have that, you're not legit, but from the eyes of cast and directors, agents and managers, you look a little more right. well put together. You know what I'm saying? So right. more professional, right? Yeah, more professional. So it's a great tool. That's why for me, I always prioritize when I first started. Like I said, when you first start, you don't want, want to worry about that too much because that type those credits will only come from projects that have uh, somewhat of a decent budget. It could be student films or mm. feature films, or low budget films that have stuff on there, but there is a process to, to submit it on there. And I think this is certain, I don't know if you have to pay a fee. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but for certain features you do have to pay for it. So I'm guessing you might have to pay to have it up on there. Um, but it's a great tool for an actor to advertise yourself, advertise your credits, advertise, uh, who you are as a person that makes you look a little more professional and, right. and legit too um so with that being said like i said you know depending on what level you are at, that, that may not be something of interest to you at this point in my career it is important for me um yeah. just because like i said people are going to start looking you up you know when they google you or see what type of work you've done they want to see oh okay he's been in there oh he's done that and right that's a it, it, let me clarify something too with that. The reason why it's so important for that too is because so many actors lie on their resume. So some actors will say, "Yo, you know, I, you know, I did a couple episodes with, with on Power." Uh, <laughs> right. You know, what I'm saying they lying. You know, lying mm-hmm. through their teeth. Yeah, it was right. background. And I'm not saying they're lying. Well, some people do lie, but some people do background, which I'm not knocking. I've done background for for a year. Uh, but background is not something you want to put in your resume because that's not marketable. You you know, right. but some people will do background for shows and say, yeah, I've done a, I I was in a scene with with uh you know Common and we we did this scene, but you know you was you know bartender number eight, you know, and that right. that, that doesn't work. So IMDb is right. also a way to vet your credit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know if you're lying on your resume, they can look it up and you know check, especially with high profile TV shows and stuff. Um, but you know. In terms of um, to go back to agents, um, mm-hmm. it's it's all about like I said, reli- uh, reliable, uh, personable, and a professional relationship. Mm-hmm. So when an agent you know talks to you and they want to get to know you, they do want to know you as an actor and your type because that definitely plays a big part in why they sign you. So if you're someone who has a specific niche, uh, niche uh, that might work for some agents. Some agents might want some people. Who are more everyday men who can do a lot of commercial work. Uh, some agents want people who have a movie star appeal to them. Everybody's um, uh, approach to act uh, having actors on their roster is different. The higher up you get, the harder it is to get in those. Usually, with those, it's referral only, meaning only people in the industry can refer you to them, and then maybe they'll take a look at you. Um, but if you're submitting for agents and stuff like that. Just know you might get a lot of no's just because they might be full. You may not be in the right market for them or the market you're applying for. You may not be right for, which happened to me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Utah, I'm not going to be casting a lot of stuff just because my look is not right. tailored to Utah. But someone like Kyle might, you know, do really well over there. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, right. you know, you're more of that, 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 you know, demographic over there. Right. You get the look. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am nowhere near a Mormon now. <laughs> I, I, I say I plead the fifth. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's hard process to get an agent and, Getting an agent or manager is very difficult. There's way many actors trying to get into them. So my advice to anybody looking for an agent or a manager, don't do anything too drastic that you can't keep up. So if you are trying to stand out, don't do something that requires you to constantly upkeep it and, you know, stuff. it's going to be expensive to do. My hair is something that don't take, I mean, it's my hair. I don't have to do much to it. But some people, you know, it could be body modifications. It could be you know, changing the color of their hair, cutting their hair, whatever works for you. But just know every agent has or manager has a different um, perspective, have a different uh, requirement for them. And it really, like I said, it really goes down to also your material too. Because for a lot of agents and managers, you're you're representing them too. So when you get into these casting offices and these auditions, when these casting agents and stuff, they look at you, don't 
they know who your audition, who's your agent and manager. So if you're going in there, you're always bombing lines. You're, you're never prepared. You're, you're giving them attitude. You're talking back. You're, you're saying slick stuff. You, they're going to find out. And when they find out, they will drop you. You might even get a blemish in the industry. People mm. do talk in this industry. So it's very political in the sense that everybody has a voice. And it's, especially the people behind the camera. If you piss them off or... Uh, the people who's giving you the, the agents and managers who are giving you the opportunity to go out for these things and you're ruining their represent uh, uh, their um, image, mm. you're going to get dropped and it's going to be very hard for you to to uh, find somebody else who will take you on. Because for them, it is a business, but it's also people representing them. So they want people, you know, some agents will be willing to take a guy who's only done, you know, five little projects, but will show up to every audition versus a guy Who's done a couple decent things, but every time they turn around, he's calling out. He can't make this audition. He don't want to do it, just because, like I said, it's a business. It's all about money, but it's also about people taking opportunities. So for me, I think I've only turned down two auditions in, in, in you know, thirteen years, and that's mm-hmm. usually just because it may be something I've talked to my agent about. I'm not comfortable doing that. That's not something. I really want to do, and I'm not going to waste their time or your time. So you have those conversations with them. But it's really a working relationship. Your agent, you work for your agent, and your agent works for you, your manager works for you, you work for your manager. So it's not no, I get an agent, they do all the work, I sit back and relax. No, you work with them, they're gonna work with you. Like I said, everybody's trying to make money, you know. So especially with a manager, they're a little more hands-on than an agent. Agent will normally they'll sit you down if they like you, you sign contracts and they start submitting you stuff like that. But managers, they fine-tune everything so. They sit down with you. They go through your headshots, your resume, all your material, your websites. Uh, so when you get to a certain level, uh, there's two major ones that you want, Actors Access and Casting Networks. Um, you can pay for them. Some people do submit and get work from doing that. But it does get expensive doing all the casting websites. So managers will sit down. All right. Uh, your resume needs some work. Let's fine tune that. Uh, we need more footage for your reel because these aren't working for the type of things you want to go for. So we got to clean that up. Your headshots are outdated. You need to get, get those redone. Um, you need more training. Your, your training is lacking a little bit. We need to get you in more classes. Um, managers will sit down and they'll submit you for everything too, but they're more hands-on. They will tell you what needs to be corrected. Uh, you know, They'll look at your auditions. Hey, um, you know what? I didn't like that choice. How about you do it this way and send it back to me? I'll let you know if I like that. So it's really, it's really about making relationships with people. So whether I go about all this stuff, like you want to make an impression. So even if, you know, down the line, your agent and you part ways, they will always have, as long as they can walk away and say, I respect him. And we had a great relationship. If you ask them for a referral, they'll do it. But this is really about a, a, a industry of, uh, respect and uh, what was it called? Um, word of mouth. So I usually get cast. I usually get invited to go to the same casting offices often just because they may recognize me. They like me. They like who I am and they remember me. And that's right. the key part. You know, you want people to be like, oh, I remember this guy. He wasn't good for this project, but let's bring him back in for this. And that happens to me all the time. That's how you want to go about it. But if you're that guy and I've met a lot of people who aren't don't have no credits, but they're walking audition like they own the place. You know, <laughs> oh, you telling me what to do? Oh, they, I, I ain't trying to do that, man. I'm doing it my way. You right. do that to people casting, you know, major motion pictures. You're not getting work, and we've right. seen celebrity actors not work anymore because they have a, a, mm-hmm. a nasty attitude. Right. So it's it's all about word of mouth, and it's all about your your place in the industry. So. Be like I said, be open minded. I've been doing it 30 years. I'm still, you know, I don't act like I know everything, right. and uh, I don't go into every audition thinking I deserve this more than the other person. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what these people want, I don't know what they're looking for. I'm just putting my best foot forward, and hopefully, even if I'm booked the project, they'll call you back. Hey, you know what? You may not be good for this role, but we have this other role we think you might be good for. It's happened to me multiple times, mm-hmm. so you just want to. You want to be open-minded and you want to trust the people in your corner because they ultimately understand this industry more than you do and they will guide you in a way that they feel you need. So So speaking of image, you know, we're in this age of the me too. Do you Mm. feel like you have to be a little more on your toes, a little more careful Mm. just Mm. because 
Oh man, you have to, you know, and you know, Jonathan Majors is a prime example of someone. Right. I'm not saying he's guilty or anything. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not getting all that. But he's a guy who was. I mean, he was making millions. He was in the biggest projects, and look what happened to him. Right. So unless you're a Will Smith or Denzel, who's been in the industry a long time, and and people will vouch for you, chances are you want to keep your nose clean. There was a guy from the Flash TV show. It just ended, but Harley Sawyer, he got caught up. Because a couple years ago, I think it was like seven years ago, he was writing racist, homophobic, mm -hmm. and misogynist tweets. He got kicked off the show and hasn't acted a day since. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, you know, your brand and your social media is very important. You mm -hmm. have to be careful of what you're posting and mm -hmm. what you're saying. So for me, you know, doing a podcast, my earlier episodes, I was a little more, you know, outspoken. Being a New Yorker, I, you know, used to lay my opinion down on the line. But I've realized as it started mm. growing and as more people start listening to it, if you piss certain people off, and I'm not talking about the people who matter in the industry, but you can piss somebody off, you know, who's listening, and they will directly find who's your, 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 your the people who represent you and all that stuff, and they will try to get you canceled. They'll try to get you fired. Wow. And then people do that. So you have to move with social media. You have to move smart. <clears throat> so for me, I only post stuff that's related to my brand, or stuff that mm. I care about. So, you know, you look at my Instagram, it's a lot of travel pictures, a lot of fitness and uh, acting stuff. Um, mm. And occasionally, I, now I'm starting to do uh, post uh, podcast stuff on there too. But it's only, my stuff is more of the influencer created aspect of it. Now, everybody don't want to do that, right? But if you're going to be on Instagram, you know, posting guns and drinking right. beer all the time and, you know, saying <laughs> stupid stuff on Twitter, and we'll get back to you. You know, you might think nobody knows who I am now. I could get away with it. But trust me, you, we are seeing celebrities getting tweets dunk up 15 years mm -hmm. ago, you know, getting canceled for it. So you have to move smart. You have to be, <clears throat> unfortunately, nothing is deleted off the internet. So you have to be mindful of what you're putting on, uh, putting out there. Like I said, depending on who you are, you could talk about politics. You could talk about whatever you want. Just know if you go about it in a uh, disrespectful way, even if you're not, people might interpret it that way and they'll use it against you. Mm -hmm. So I just, me personally, I keep my personal life off of there. I keep my opinions to myself. And when I talk about, about my podcast, I usually reserve, you know, if I'm talking about, you know, something like Black Lives Matter or police killing black people, I will be a little more, uh, you know, outspoken in those instances. But when it comes to politics and LGBTQ, I'll keep that for closed doors just because I, gotcha. I know, you know, how this industry is. So right. you know, it's unfortunate, but the <clears throat> time now. Well, look at uh, Danny Masterson. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the dude was on that 70s show and then he did uh, what was called The Ranch. Mm. On, uh, oh, Netflix. yeah. I did hear about that. Yeah. Man, I loved that show, too. Mm. And the next yeah. thing you know, they killed him off. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nah. What he's it's right for him. Right. He's looking so, at 30 years, I think. Yeah, 30 mm. years, yeah. Wow. So, brother, let me ask you a question, man. Are you the only one in the family that's in the in the, in the uh, industry, man? Oh, yeah. I'm the only one. Oh, well, so my, my little so one of my older brothers, he works for a music producer in Atlanta. So he's okay. kind of in the industry. Right. My little brother wants to be a rapper, so and I'll be trying to give him advice to try to help him as much as I can with that. But in terms of actually being involved at this point, yeah, I'm the only one. Okay. And it's, you know, some family support me, others don't. I don't really mm. I, It used to be something that. Yeah, it's like that, brother. It's like that. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I don't, I think anybody, like, if you take anything away from this, do whatever makes you, you have happy. Mm. So for me, you know, I, corporate jobs don't work for me. I don't discriminate against anybody. I've worked you know, fast food jobs to, to, to stay in this industry. So, you know, do whatever makes you happy. If you want to be an actor, go and pursue that. If you want to be a comedian, go do that. If you want to be a rapper, go do that. If you want to do something, go do it and make sure you surround yourself with people. You know, family's family. It is what it is. You may want to, you know, distance yourself away from them, but not everybody's going to support you, but you will find people along the way who will support you. So a lot of people I went to high school with, college with, uh, even I met after you know college in LA, New York. A lot of them still support me, you know. And and you know you're going to find people who are naturally 
you know, want to meet you, who wants to support you in any aspect, you know, and it's hard, you know, being in this industry by myself, uh, it's a great thing because I can also help other people. I can teach right. them the business aspect of it because so many people, you could be in the industry, but you may not understand the business aspect. So how much advice can you really give? You know, a lot of people don't look at, you know, I was watching a DJ Vlad interview and he was talking to uh, Scarlett, up and coming New York rapper, female rapper. And he was telling her about the business side of the industry. She didn't understand. She was like flabbergasted hearing about right. this stuff. So for me, you know, being the only person, now that I'm starting to see other family members start become interest, interested and they come to me for advice. And it's a cool aspect. You know, it's great that I can give people advice and wisdom. And like I said, I'm always learning. I have I learn it. I have buddies a little higher up in the industry than I am, who I constantly reach out to and we talk and and I learn from them. So I always try to pass them down to other people as best as I can. Got you, got you. Now, brother, I'm actually another question, and we're gonna get to uh, some of your some of your uh, your film. Um, how far are you trying to take your acting, man? Because I'm doing an interview on Thursday with the uh, film producer out of Cameroon. Oh. Yeah, so so if you try to go overseas and do some film, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey man, you know, I I was you know I was having this conversation with my my longtime friend who been in the industry a long time and my manager. You know, for me, I don't care about fame. Now, gradually, you know, just walking down the street, people you know notice. My hand. I've done a couple projects that people on YouTube that people you know recognize me from. Right. But for me, I don't. I don't care. I, I don't really care about fame. Now, will I say if it came to me, I'm gonna pass it up? No. Right. But I'm not chasing it. You know, what I'm saying I'd be an idiot to say no. Right. Because uh, I know what comes with that. You know, mm -hmm. and for me, I want to be a working actor. I don't want to have to constantly balance a day job or a night job with acting. Right. It, it gets tough, and especially, you know. As I get older, I'm still young, but I know at some point I'm gonna be in my 30s. I'm gonna want to settle down and have a family. I don't want to be working. Not that I'm doing minimum wage jobs as much anymore, but I don't want to be working minimum wage jobs to support my 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 career. Right. So right now, while I'm young and I still have less responsibilities, I'm trying to do as much as I can gotcha. and get to that. You know, ultimately, I just want to get paid for what I do. And so, you know, that could be, you know, $100,000 for a movie or it could be as long as I can make rent. Uh, right. That's I'm in the business right now of of working and also making money because now I have representation. Right. So it's not just about me now. I have people in my corner who has bills. They have, you know, things to do, too. So uh, ultimately, my my career aspect, movie star, I, I'm, you know, I will do TV, obviously, but movies is what I want to do. That's like my. Right. That's what I'm aiming for. So I want to be, like I said, the new Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I want to be that guy that show up on the camera, you know, and make the girls, you know, want to, you know, ask for my signature and the dudes like, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Dwayne, and you, you recently had a birthday. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh, oh, happy belated, brother. Yeah, my mom didn't even call me. How? Thank you guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> the nerve. Hey. You know, I I don't get on social media very much anymore, and I just happened to get on Facebook and say your your friend Percy Brown just had a birthday. And I'm like, oh, I got to message him, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I got thinking, you know, he'd probably be great to come on the show. So, oh yeah, duh. it was a double thank you. Hey, you know, it's it's I, I love doing stuff like this. Expect I don't really talk about my journey often either, so. Uh, now I'm kind of at that space where I want to start doing that because there's always somebody out there who can learn and, and grow and stuff like that. And, and how old are you now? I am the big old age of 28. 28. Huh. Man, I remember that like it was 25 years ago. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to get into part to show, share some of this brother's uh, work. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to share some of his brother's work. Like I said, man, I checked him out, man. He, he He's very talented. I look forward to seeing more of his work. Um, as a matter of fact, before we get into that, man, where do we, where do we go to see? Uh, check out your, your full films, man? Oh, oh, you know what? Actually, I was going to mention, I can probably send you my actual website. So 
this one I haven't used and I haven't touched that thing in like three years. Okay. <laughs> um, but I know it's Google, it's searchable, so I know a lot of people use that. I just, I don't, I made that website at a point when I was really, when I first got my agent, I was just trying to, you know, do whatever I can. Uh, if you want my actual website, I can send you uh, uh, the email for it, uh, the link to it. But okay. my films, so I have a film out um, that's done, completed, third week. I filmed this last April in Staten Island. Right now, we're just waiting from some of the biggest film festivals. So um, uh, Tribeca, uh, what is it, Canine? It's not Canine. I know it's not that, but... That big old festival, um, we're looking, we're waiting to hit back from those big festivals. Mm. Um, but whether or not at some point this year we're going to be on streaming platforms, I, I had a conversation with the director about two months ago. Um, he'll give me all the details and stuff. And I have the footage for it. It's just out of respect for the film that being out yet. I haven't published it yet just because yeah. we don't want no sneak peeks and you know all that right, stuff. But right. it will be out this year. And that, uh, I have uh, some other stuff coming out too. So. It's gonna be fun. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's check out some of this work, man. I thought I think this is what you got, man. Is good, man. What you got on here, man? Good stuff, brother. Good stuff. So let's go ahead and check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's do that. Yeah. Let's see here. We got those up here. Do you, Do you want my other my actual website too, or? Yeah, you can sit in my way, man. Most definitely. Oh, yeah. I got you. Let's see if this thing is loaded. Let me see. Let me see if I can stop it here. Let me play it again. Yeah, this thing is is not loaded. Ah, uh, it worked just fine. Oh, let me see something. Hold on. Let me see something. Let me see something. Uh, yeah, you know what, man? Send it. Send it to me. Okay, I got you right now. I'm gonna send it. What the hell was copy and this website i actually created my own i had a couple i had a little bit of help uh but this one is like my real updated one and i haven't like i said i'm waiting until the other stuff uh come out before i really update my real and stuff but when that's when the, you see that new film and stuff that i've done it, it's way better it's it's gonna be good, but I just sent you the the email. Oh, okay, um, for... okay. Hopefully my Gmail. Oh, there you go. I got it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's see here. Oh, Dwayne and Rod Johnson called me. What do you want? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> always bugging me. Always, always bugging me. man. Oh, my God. Tom Holland called me yesterday. Let the voicemail. I was like, come on, man. I'm busy. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. Yeah, Gal Gadot keeps calling me. I'm like, look, I'm married. Get that to your thick head. I mean, come on. I, you know what? I actually met her in high school. She's, fr I, she's amazingly tall. Like, a lot of people in the industry yeah. are short. She's tall as hell. Like I, I think she's like six foot, something like that. She's, she, man, yeah. she was taller than me in high school. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I, met her, I met her at a con in in New York. Oh really? Yeah. Was it was it one of those uh, DC? Uh... Yeah, there was. Uh, well, everybody from Justice League was there. It was right after that movie came out. Uh. And. Uh, when I met Jason Momoa, uh, I uh, I told him I said, "Hey man, my wife wants you to sign her boobs," and he just shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. oh man! So we're gonna go take our picture with them, right? And uh, the photographer's like, oh, "Who's gonna stand next to who?" And and uh, my wife says oh, i'm gonna stand next to jason momoa and, and i looked at henry cavill and i'm like well dude i guess you're stuck with me and he goes yeah it happens all the time <laughs> <laughs> i love to meet those people especially i i would love to do I, i'm a big dc guy i've been i know all the characters even the non-mainstream ones like marsh man so my plan is to eventually i want to do superhero movies that's my ultimate goal because 
One, that's where the money is right now. And two, mm. you know, I mean, with my head, come on, look at that. Come on, I, I could easily do that. <laughs> yeah, man, you got the look, brother. You got the look, that superhero man. <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you know, people do love superhero movies, but they're starting to lose their appeal because they're doing more agenda than they are the story. Yeah, you know what, brother? You know what? You should do the new, uh, uh, the new Spawn movie. Spawn, remember Spawn? Oh yeah! <laughs> I can see you play a spar, brother. <laughs> hey, I heard they're gonna do that one almost like a, a Freddy Krueger movie, and you're only gonna see him every once in a while. Really? Hmm. Hmm. I don't. Hmm. You know what? I didn't like that Freddy. Kr- it wasn't bad. I I think those movies. You need Freddy Krueger in those movies. I don't know how they got. How do you thought? I think I watched that movie out of what uh, hour and a half. I think I saw Freddy Krueger um, um, fifteen minutes or not. That's, that's criminal, right? That's yeah, criminal. It, it did make it scarier. I thought. It, I think it, it's a balance. You like it, you know when when I watch Friday Thirteenth, I love when Jason comes on. I anticipate watching, but I think if I gotta go thirty minutes of people doing stupid things that and people that I don't care about. I think it's all about storytelling, like you said. If you make the characters um relatable and people want to understand them, then I think it works. But if you make characters that nobody cares about, it's like, oh, when is Freddie coming to kill these people? Come on, let's go. Right. You know. <laughs> well, I, I wish they would make the characters more like the comic books and stop mm. straying away from the storylines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I it's because it's my it's it's 2023. Everybody, it, it's the whole diversity thing, and it's trying to be inclusive, which I respect. I think it's for people of color right now, it's an amazing time, but I also think because of that, they're trying to make things a little more inclusive. So, in that aspect, they're you know changing characters that are beloved it and rewriting you know, st- you know, characters that already had a built in storyline, but they. I, like you said, there's an agenda thing going on. Some of the times, I think earlier, like a couple years ago, even when Marvel first started, I, I even take it all the way back to Spawn, you know, in 1990, even though I wasn't around when that movie came about. But those movies were about telling a story. Now it's about pushing a... I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> oh, you know what? That it came to me. Blade! Blade. Uh, they already got oh, some money for that, though. <laughs> yeah, but they have. Oh, de- you'll be a perfect Blade. Oh my uh, God. They have they- delayed that movie again, and it may not happen. I did hear what's the what's his name? Uh, Marsh. Uh, Marsh- I always Marshalla Ali or something. Yeah. He looks. He looks like a good Blade. I think. I don't know. I think for me, I think they might want me. To- if I were to do it, they might want me to cut my hair just because that character, Wesley Snipes, made him so famous that people have an idea of what he looks like. Right. So, so I, I would do Static Shock. Well, you could you know. be a son. You could be Blade's son. No, right. I, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, slice some dice some vampires, you know? Instead of Blade, you could be Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Shane. <laughs> I will I'll say but, that. I'll be Butter Knife. <laughs> Wesley Snipes, <laughs> he he was born to play that part. Yes. Oh he man! The hell out of that movie. Yes. He uh, top top five best portrayals of a superhero movie, a uh, superhero ever, easily. There's so many. It's like actually, I think in, in the complete pa- package, top three. I think mm-hmm. top three because oh, some easy. people, when you're playing a character, like some people. Like when we talk about Spider Man's for instance, I they told me McGuire was a better his movies were better and he was a better Peter Parker, but Tom Holland, some people might say, is a better overall package. So it yeah. I think in terms of actual portrayal, Wesley Snipes take the cake easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's let's take a look at some of this brother's work, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look let's at him. I'm sure I'm sure he's gonna tell us about some of it while we play some of it. Yes, absolutely. So uh, you know, I, I created my own website. Um, I started it two years ago because, like I said, this industry is all about marketability. So for me, you know, when I'm pitching myself now, I'm not. But when I was pitching myself to managers, agents, um, um, and just trying to get my name out there, um, so these videos on this on the right, What's up, man? Like the man, videos, what's going on? <laughs> I, 
Oh, I actually did post that one. All right, I'll let you. So this is from Third Week. The movie I did, it's a snippet of it. I didn't post the whole thing. But this is from the film I did last year. So I played the role of Taylor. Um, and uh, this movie was uh, is based in Staten Island, 1990s piece. But okay. I don't want to give too much away just because, you know, when a movie comes, I want people to enjoy it. But this is actually a sneak. I forgot I, I published it on there. Yeah, hopefully it'll play. Let's see. You know how YouTube is. What's up, man? Hello, man. What's going on? <laughs> it told me who's out, bro. Yeah. Man, glad to see you. You know, same here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out in the what? I'll see you around. I, I'm just staying out of trouble. You know what I mean? Like, old friends of trouble? Yep. I'm just on parole, you know? And, it's my second week. Chill out, man. I'm serious. I just, I just don't want them to do anything too shady. You know what I mean? You don't have to bail on me, man. Yeah. Where you going? Hospital. What happened? Grandma. Is she all right? She fainted. So, yeah. Wow. Go. What's up, Taylor? <laughs> Come with us. Oh, you remember Joel? Yo, what's up? Yeah, of course I do. What's going on? Come with us. Going to the tracks. I'll be DJing in tonight. It'll be fun. Uh, nah, man. I'm going ahead, though. Come on. There'll be some chicks there. Party. Girls. It'll be fun. I need to go home. <laughs> Please, bro. <laughs> There'll be some chicks there. <laughs> what is this? Back from work, too, man. Food delivery, man. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Put some bread together for my vinyl, you know? I feel that. That's pretty cool. I remember you were a good artist. Maybe you could do a design or something for the sleeve, you know? That'd be pretty dope. Sure, man. Let's talk about it. Yeah, sure. Come on. Sure. How's your grandma? Better. I mean, back home. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love, I love those. So that film is one of my favorite films I've done. Uh, essentially, that character. So it's black and white. But that, so the first two scenes that you saw me in, those were custom made outfits from um, a company called Angry Elephant. I still talk to them all the time. Black owned, amazing people. And they custom create that sweatsuit. So it's an orange sweatsuit. Um, and I have their logo design. It was really good. Um, I, 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 the only thing I changed was just I wish I would have got a little more shape for that just because when I shot that, my diet was a little crazy. I wasn't too fat, but that's why for me, image, that's why I'm big into fitness because, you know, right. luckily, you know, I was able, they got me in some good angles, but that's the. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> No, you could probably tell a little bit of the hand. I, I don't really care that much about it, but it's it, one of my. That was easily my manager when she saw that. She was like, "Absolutely, put that up. We need that right now." So, mm -hmm. I think I, I have a couple other clips I, I have on uh, YouTube and um, some other stuff that I posted, while the self tapes and stuff that I put up there. Uh, but it's really uh, it's a process. Like that was it was fun. And I think my character was such a was a, was such a breath of air for the sh uh, for the movie, and it's about a ninety minute movie. Uh, no, I'm lying. It's about uh, seventy five minutes. Uh, but my character kind of takes away a lot of the the message, and it, it's supposed to be fun dialogue, fun scenes mm -hmm. that it it breaks up some of that that tension stuff that happens in the movie. Gotcha, so gotcha. I, I love that role. It was it's phenomenal. I can't wait for for it to come out. Well, brother, let me tell you something, man. You're you're natural, man. You're very natural. You can tell it just you just roll with the punches, man. You can tell it's it's natural. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of times, man, you watch these actors, man. It's like, oh my god, it's it's horrible. <laughs> oh, I, trust me, trust me. I you know, and Netflix is guilty of that. Like uh, Netflix, uh, oh, too, yeah, oh my god, they, they be casting people with that. I'm like, yo, what? And, uh, and, and Amazon too. Amazon put us some movies. Up. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Low what is this up there for? <laughs> like they just I'm put like, somebody off the street. He must record this with a cricket phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some I'm of like, those oh independent god, films. Yeah. But some yeah, man. Hey, man, that was awesome, man. Definitely, you definitely got the I got the juice, man. Got it. You got you it. You know, it's and you know that that was 
that was something you know when i the reason why i was smiling so much is like one of one of the things i like to do is i, I compare my work a lot of times i'm very critical about my characters and how i perceive myself which i think the growth of how i started when i started transitioning in 2018 to now into tv and film it it took me a long time to really get to that point and i'll be honest it, it's something and that's why i stress working all the time in training because coming from theater it, like i said it's way it's too different so you know i imagine like when we doing podcasts it's more theater but if um you know if this was like an interview th- that would be tv so it's a different medium so i had to learn how to bring it down and you know talk yeah. like this and and really understand how the camera works you know and it took me a really long time to get comfortable in front of the camera not so much the character but just understanding all right don't be too loud don't be too boisterous be natural and it took me a long time to get to that point and and i'll be honest with that i think if you if i was if you saw some of my earlier stuff that i had i had a private coach for for a year but if you would have saw some of the early stuff I've done, you'd be like, wow, he's a completely different person. But it's because I put that time in to learn and understand the business and understand how the two mediums are. And that's how I got to that point. And, and touch on one thing you said, when you watch other actors and the work is terrible, I think, and I, I try not to shame other actors, but I think a lot of times it's people are doing roles that are over their head. They're mm. not doing roles that they're good with. So Dwayne Rock Johnson, I you know I'm gonna throw him out there because I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I had to. We love you, Dwayne. Don't beat us up. We love you, man. <laughs> well, I'm the most charismatic man. I'm coming for him. But <laughs> I mean, I, I I bring him up because this has been a, a whole debate going on. I think me and Kyle might have touched on it. But mm. about who's the greatest actor between Dwayne and Rock Johnson, Batiste, and John Cena, right? And I think. Mm. For as charismatic and stuff as Dwayne is, like Black Adam, a lot of people don't like that movie. It was a box office bomb because Dwayne is a really good guy, really, and he. I think he's a good actor, but mm. I think he chooses projects that fits what he's good at, which is not. I think it's great. I think right. when you're, you know, trying to make as much money as you can, do something you enjoy, do something that you're comfortable with. But Black Adam was something that I think. He, someone else should have done that because he don't have that, that range to do a character like that. Mm. Yeah, he's a murderous person, but this intention behind his message and what he's doing, whether you agree with it or not. So I think to have someone, you know, Michael Fassen, you know, actually by actors I admire, Michael Michael Fassenbender, who's played Magneto in the newer X-Men. Him, uh, the guy who played Xavier, I'm forgetting his name, uh, McCoy, uh, uh, something McCoy. Yeah, they're yeah. a phenomenal act. They know how they they're actors. David Leto too, really great actors. They know how to, they know how to act. They know how to <clears throat> portray those type of characters. Now, am I that actor? No, but I wouldn't do stuff like that because I know that's not something I would. I'm comfortable. I know that's not me. Mm-hmm. And even though it's acting, you also want to bring a piece of yourself to that role. So I would do stuff like Taylor. That's a role that. Or roles like similar to that is my strong suit. I like being that guy that makes people laugh, that breaks up the scene. I'm like a big personality. Mm. But I also have uh, there's just a couple other uh, pieces of footage I have out there that's a little more serious that I can do. But it's really about doing stuff you're comfortable with. So I don't just take roles just for the money because right. your work will show that. And when you get to the Hollywood level, if you're not a, a, a Will Smith already, you'll see a lot of the big, you know, actors who are, you know, popping, you know, they stop getting roles. Like the guy who played right. Tupac and I think all eyes on me. Yeah. He, he don't work no more. You don't really see him in movies no more. He, he do a whole bunch of films now. Exactly. You know, and I'm sure he's probably making rent with those, but I yeah, think. Yeah, he making rent, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? but, but hey, think... let's let's rewind back, man. Who do you think is the best out of them three? Oh, easily Batista. Easily. Oh no! Really? Yeah, I think I like so. Like John, man. I I think I think John is I, I think he's very underrated. I think John got it. Oh, I I would say Batista, John, this and then Rock. The reason why I say Batista, I've you know I, I John Cena, I think is a great actor, mm. uh, and I think the reason why I put uh, Batista over him is because Batista's been in Hollywood a little longer, so he has more gotcha, of range gotcha. of, okay. of right. projects. So. 
do, uh, Batista, Drax. I mean, come on, everybody remember that 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 scene and then uh, I think it was Avengers Endgame when he was uh, something Gamora. Um, and like he he had drags, and then he did that in the wood cabin in the woods movie. Mm. Way different character. And I say yeah, I've right, even seen right. stuff that went straight to the 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 uh, bins in Walmart. He's very versatile. He's very rangy. Right. And I think so many com- people conflate with being the most popular with the most talented. It's mm. not. It's it's different. And that's why I talk about the industry. I was having this conversation with my buddy uh, Odie the other day. This two different ways you could go. You could go the, the the Dave Batista route where you, don't get me wrong, he's making good money. You don't want to sneeze at, right? Right. But he's doing very versatile projects. Right. But you go Dwayne the Rock Johnson route, he's the biggest movie star right now. He gets paid millions upon millions to do these roles, but he's not the most. When you talk about an award winning performance, that's not Dwayne. Right. But in terms of paycheck size, he's the guy. So right. it, it really it really depends on what type of direction you want to go to. Now, before I wanted to go to the Dave Batista route, but I also see the upside to going the Dwayne route. And Dwayne, <laughs> he has shown the range before. But when you're a movie star, you, you tend to do stuff that is going to sell and you're comfortable with. So I know I'm not I'm not a dramatic actor. I'm not somebody who's going to be crying and bawling my eyes out in the middle of a screen. Right. That's just not me, you know. I'm not a guy who's gonna be able to come to play off a cancer patient who's about to die. That's not right. me. But I will play the frat boy. I will play the guy who steal, steals your girlfriend. I'll be the guy that goes to the club and pick up girls. That's 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 the type of stuff I go out for. So you. you know, it's you have to you have to pick stuff that's comfortable for you. But right. some actors they get to that point where they just care about the money. They just do anything that pays them. <laughs> you were talking about the guy that played. Uh, Professor X, that that was uh, uh, McAvoy. Yeah, McAvoy. Yeah, him. That guy has a great range. When he did Split, I was like, oh my God, this guy. And I tell you who else I think is probably one of the best actors out today is Evan Peters. Mm. He's good too. He's good too. Another underrated underrated guy. When he did all those different serial killers in uh american horror story mm. i mean you yeah you would have believed he was one of those serial killers in each role that he played All right <laughs> that yeah. was awesome uh, yeah. and you know it's and that's why brand is important too and you know brand and typecasting is kind of the same but it's similar where typecasting is you get typecasted in a box right so if you only and it's unfortunate, but a lot of minorities 20 years ago, they was only getting criminal stuff, you know, mm. gangbanger, you know, shooting up the block, robbing, <laughs> stealing, right? That was the only thing. And so many actors, don't get me wrong, if you're comfortable doing that, by all means, go do that. Some people choose to stay criminals because this industry is all about what you bring to the table. So there's some people, um, a guy who passed away, I, I forget, but he played a villain in, Law, um, in Mission Impossible. I'm forgetting his name. But he was a guy who he only played villainous roles. But because he went about it in a different way, he didn't just play villains just for the sake of killing people. He had an intention behind his characters. Right. And anytime he played those roles, he got a call. He didn't audition for the stuff no more. People just said, hey, man, uh, we want you to play this guy, you know, this Tom Cruise movie. Bam. He didn't have to audition. He carved out a niche for him. So some actors go that route, you know, where this is what I do. Uh, you call me or I'll audition for this type of stuff. And that's how they go about it. And they make a lot of money. They may not be boss office names like Dwayne, but they're not working day jobs. They're paying bills. They can live a comfortable life. Uh, but if you want to go, uh, if you want to be a Dave Batista, uh, that's going to be a different route. If you want to go the Dwayne route, that's going to be a different route. It really it really just, just depends on how you want to be seen. So my brand <laughs> is, I mean, the, the head, the charismatic personality. That's what I'm pushing out there. When you look at my social media, that's what I'm pushing out there. Guy was athletic, very charismatic, very personable. So when I go out for stuff, you know, that's what I'm trying to present. Now, if I have to play a little more range, I can, but that's what I'm, that's my niche right there. That's what I'm carving out for myself, that lane. So, and it, you know what? It, 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 depending on what type of things you're trying to do, I can do stuff for Disney, I could do stuff for ABC, I could do Marvel. The way the direction I'm going to, I can do those things. If you want to go a more character actor, you might go a different route where you might only do 
horror, America Horror Story, Stranger Things, more dark and edgy type of stuff. So mm-hmm. it, there's so many directions you go in this industry, and it's really right. about your type. Because like I said, you don't want to waste your time and anybody else's time or this for stuff that you know you don't want to do and you know you're not going to be good at, but you're just doing it for the money. Because your work will show. And <clears throat> when we talk about these big, uh, uh, big budget TV shows and stuff, if you suck, you're not going to get work. And right. that's really how it goes, especially when you're not a proven name in Hollywood. Right. Your first big movie, you mess it up. You know, you may not get called back for a while if you ever do. So you, right. you have to know what's your strength. You have to. That, that's what this industry taught me. And it teaches other people. Know your strengths and, and play on that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, brother, look. How do we, uh, your show, The uh, Prince of Fresh Air, Give us some titles, man, to check you out on our Instagram. Oh man, uh, so I, you know, I do have to start posting on Instagram, which I'm starting to do. Okay. Uh, but the Prince of Fresh Share podcast, you can find it on, I mean, 30 major platforms: iHeart, Apple, Spotify. I know everybody got that, so there's no excuse to check that out. No, right, um, right. And it's a bunch of you could Google it if you want. Uh, my social media, Mister Don't Know Days Off, Percy. That's right. I take no days off because right. I will be eating cheeseburger <laughs> right after this. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> at Facebook, uh, the Prince of Fresh Air, you can search me up there, IMDb, Percy Brown. Um, or you can check out my website. My website is something I take great pride in now because it's easy now to just navigate. Now I don't have to tell people, search this, look this up. You just go to my website and uh, you can find all my social media, all the links to my podcast, check out my actor stuff, the content I've done with Jubilee Media, big YouTube channel. Um, you can see some of the episodes I've done on there as well. Um, and check me out. Just Google me. You can't miss the hair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, ladies, look, I'm sorry. I try to get y'all, get y'all hooked up, but he already, he already taken, ladies and gentlemen. He's whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> look, don't get Now it's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm Polly man. now. I'm Polly. <laughs> he's, 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 he already tried to get canceled. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, on, brother, man. look, man, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, go check him out. Like I said, the, hey, the Prince of Fresh Air, Instagram. Check him out. Got some movies out. Hey, I'm supporting, brother. I'm supporting. I'm supporting. Yeah. You know what? Before we go, let me say this, man. This is one of the my favorite podcast or uh, things I've done in a while, you know, you two bring great energy, very fun. You make it, That's my you make white it. Brother. He ain't you know tell you his brother. No, nah, he didn't tell me that. He lied. You can't, yeah, you I, can't I, tell I, the black, black brother. You can't I'm tell the family brother. resemblance, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, I could be the new Jackie Chan and, and uh, uh, Chris me. Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> the retired edition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, God. we're gonna be the next forty-eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> next forty-eight hours. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Man. Oh man. But yo, you you got this was fun, man. Like, like I said, man. Chris Tucker has been, but you you're great. You both are great. This this um, what y'all have going on is fantastic. I think it's it's nice to have conversations like this. I have people who have personality. And I think that unfortunately in this this era of content creating, a lot of people are losing that personality and fun aspect so you guys knocked it you know i think you might have a little more personality than me man i might have to you know check you (laughs) but look you got the look though you got the look (laughs) i'll keep it that i'll keep it that i'm just going in the muscle i I got neither one of those i'm I'm lacking in the height and the muscle (laughs) but you make it up in comedy so yeah man i appreciate it brother i appreciate it Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a pleasure, brother. Brother, thank you so much for coming on, man. I kept you longer than I wanted to, man. But hey, man, you kept the energy going. I love it. Let me know. Let me know, man. If you, if you, uh, matter of fact, know what I'm gonna do after the show. I want to see the um the content information for my brother that uh does film in Cameroon. Okay. Yeah, I'm always about networking, brother. That's what we do. Got a network. Got a network. Absolutely. But, but network. just, just um, my security will reach out because you know I I gotta go meet um. Uh, Jason Momoa for lunch in uh, about an hour. Or so, no, I'm kidding. Can I be <laughs> y'all's gopher? <laughs> Somebody had cleaned up the table. You That's right. right. I'll do no, it. 
<laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, you know how to find me. Told you how to find them, man. Hey, hey, hey. Like I said, once again, bro, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we're going to have you on again, man. When Look, if you get big, don't forget about us, man. Don't forget. Wait, what's right. your name again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people get big and they forget about the, the small people. They nah, say, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey, I, 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 still, I still keep in touch with some of the, the, the people. I, I, when I worked at the soup kitchen in college, I still talk to you know the people struggling with drug addiction and stuff. I, I'm, oh. I'm not one of those people. you know. Oh, despite man. how I might come across, a lot of people will assume I'm a tool job. A little bit, but I do care about people. <laughs> Oh man, hey brother, you got any final words, brother? We yeah. well, don't keep this brother any longer. We kept him, man. <laughs> hey man, this was fun, so it was worth it. Yes, yes, um, Check out the interview that I did with with Percy, and then also the time I got to be on his show. Feeling the vibes, that's right. Feeling the that's vibes. Right. Um, I've got some <laughs> great interviews coming this week with some musicians on uh, on the Vibes broadcast. And those are always posted at 11 a.m. Central, no later than 12 p.m. Eastern. Right, right. And yeah. uh, okay. tomorrow, man, we got a yes. great guest coming tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Oh. Mr. Jack O'Holloran. Yes. Ex-boxer, actor. Yes. I can't wait. I'm a big boxer fan, so I can't yeah. wait to talk about boxing it's, and all see, that good stuff. You like D.C., right? Yeah. Okay, did you like the Superman with Christopher Reeves? Yes. Okay, so you know the the, the three bad guys that ex escaped the Phantom Zone? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Okay, you know the, the big guy, Non? Yeah. He was neat. That's Jack. Wow. How did – maybe off camera. How did – how did y'all find him? Um, <laughs> I I got to interview him because he's got a. I think the book's released already, but um, I, I interviewed him some time back, and I messaged him the other day. And I'm like, "Hey, you want to come on this live show?" And he's okay. I'll do it. But he's looking for sponsors. He wants to do a show with me where we talk about uh, like JFK and um, Jimmy Hoffa. Huh. He he actually was uh, his family was mafia. Let's put that. Oh, way. really? Hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna have a pretty cool conversation. He knows who shot JFK. Uh oh. He knows where Jimmy Hoff is at. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, I don't know what you're missing. He's not. He's not going to mention it on the air because he oh, wants you to buy his book. We so. can talk about it off air. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't nobody show up my house. Yeah, exactly. The government will take you off air. <laughs> but Jack fought uh, George Foreman, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, Ken Norton. Yes. Yeah, Ken oh, wow, I didn't know that. Wow. Yes. I'm about to yeah. look him up. Wow. I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, Jack he, been he, he been, was a drag net. He was an, um, damn, a lot of different movies, man. He, yeah, he, 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 got a, he got a long. Long roster. Yeah, is Superman his like his most popular one. Do you think or? Um, probably, yeah. Probably so. Yeah. He's in. Yeah, um, he was in. He was in. He was in. He was in Spider. Uh, Superman. Uh, Superman two and uh, the uh, Requiem. Spider Man Requiem. Requiem. Yeah. Requiem. But I mean, how you pronounce it? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah he's been busy. <laughs> Gee, well, how old is he now? He's in one of the seventies. He in his eighties. He's in his eighties. Oh, oh, yeah, he's yeah, an old G. He, <laughs> he don't. He don't act like he's in his eighties though. That dude still got it, man. Wow, I can't wait. For, I'm I'm checking that out. He, he's Italian, isn't he? Italian? Uh, no, I think he's Irish. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, Liam Neeson. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, Halloran. <laughs> So yeah, Irish. Yeah, that sounds like yeah, sounds about right. Wow. Okay, okay. I'm checking that out. I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. Jack's cool guy. You're gonna enjoy. Yeah, you might as well just kick back because he can take over and talk the whole time. Sounds good to me. I would <laughs> tell him he has a hard act to follow. <laughs> but anyway, to ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much. Like I said, please go check out my brother Percy Brown, the Prince of Fresh Air. Go check him out. Also, go subscribe to the Bob's Broadcast. Great content. And please, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Turn your notifications on. Turn your notifications on. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. 
Lady Jim will be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Central Time with Mr. Jack O'Holloran, the ex heavyweight boxer and actor. It's going to be a great time. Once again, thank you, Mr. Percy. Fresh Prince. Thank of, you. Oh, Fresh, the Prince of Fresh Air Brown. Thank you so much, brother. Thank and, you. I appreciate you guys. And, and, brother, I love you like a fat boy loves cake. <laughs> and, and we are out of here. Pain inside, we'll figure it out, we'll take the